first prints were in 2009. And I think it was one of her treatments that she was back. She took me down there and she showed me and she explained what, what the handprints were. And, you know, and I pass that along to my family, you know, and, and it's a, it, it's just a sign, you know, there's a lot of family prints down there as well. Support. It's just, a, it's a support tunnel. 2009 was the breast cancer. 2012, I think, was melanoma. 2013, I want to say, was was kidney. 2015 was liver. And 2022 was pancreatic. The handprints for her, from what she always told me, was that was that was that was her trophy. That was her victory. That was her victory, and it um, it was a, a reminder for her, you know, of what and her family of what what she went through. You know, hopefully other people will see that and it'll help them. You can beat it. There's there's a lot of survivor handprints down there. My my mom Ruth. Um, the outgoing person that she was, you know, she was a, she's just a caring individual, 50 years as a, as a nurse. She didn't want to, she didn't want to be recognized. You know, she was just a very humble person. I remember flying up here in 2009 when she, for her breast cancer and she had just had the surgery and I got into the, I got in late that Thursday night and we got to the hospital in the, Security guard over there says the visiting hours are over, and I said, "Well, you're you're not big enough to stop me from going up there." He said, "You're Bill, aren't you?" And I said, "I am." He said, "They're waiting for you." She was a very well liked individual, but she never let these little things in her life, big things in her life, change how she was. The cancer never changed her. She refused to refuse to allow that. She fell in love with this building with the Institute and what the, the people, what they, what they did for her and how generally, you know, genuine they were and completely caring. The staff is, see what I would always remember her telling me that there's none finer. And I always remember that. And then she started volunteering. She volunteered in the, in the, the, in the emergency room at the hospital. That was the way she paid back. That was her payback for everything that, you know, everybody here had done for her. And that's just how she looked at it. The biggest thing I, that I learned personally is you, she didn't know what the word quit meant. She not, there, that, that's not even in the vocabulary to give up. You, you, you just can't give up. And you, you have to continue to live your life to the fullest. It's difficult, you know, and, and but with loving family and support, friends and, and everybody, you, you get through it. Every individual she ever met was so caring and, you know, um, professional. And there's a genuine, it's like a family. You have to, you have to stay together. You can't do it by yourself. You know, you can't do it with just your doctor. You have to, it's, it's, everything is a family now. And you just have to do that. You have to be there for each other. You got to support each other, no matter how bad it is. Good days, bad days, you have to, you have to be there for support. Once you walk in that door the first time, whether you're the patient or whether you're a family member, your family, every experience I've ever had here, that's the way it was.